In an absolutely stunning house, an elderly man summons his grandson, Ihan, to his office with an urgent tone, compelling him to address a series of emails on his behalf. As Ihan enters, he inquires about the peculiar responsibility of being the sole recipient of these emails. With a hearty laugh, the grandfather discloses his involvement on numerous aid association boards, emphasizing that such tasks come with the territory. Ihan, with an inquisitive gaze, delves into the contents of the emails, discovering a plea for financial assistance for a noble cause. Upon absorbing the information, Ihan turns to his grandfather, sharing the nature of the correspondence. The grandfather, wearing a satisfied smile, entrusts Ihan with the decision-making responsibility. Ihan, somewhat incredulous, questions whether this implies carte blanche authority. The grandfather remarks on Ihan's perception of the world as already belonging to him, granting him the authority to determine who receives financial support and who does not. Ihan, mirroring his grandfather's sentiment, finds the decision-making process to be a straightforward task. Observing Ihan's nonchalant demeanor, the grandfather advises him to approach the responsibility with gravitas, likening it to a form of investment. Ihan, perplexed by the term, investment, receives an explanation from his grandfather, who expresses a desire for relaxation after tirelessly overseeing the company's transition to his son. Hinting at potential rewards, the grandfather suggests that if Ihan handles the task diligently, additional opportunities may come his way beyond mere contract signing. Ihan, with a firm resolve, reassures his grandfather, affirming his confidence in managing any challenges that may arise. The exchange between grandfather and grandson unfolds as a pivotal moment, laden with significance and the promise of future responsibilities. Several days later, Ihan's mother nonchalantly remarks that it's uncommon for family members of business owners to immediately dive into running the company. Instead, the prevailing trend is to acquire experience across diverse fields. She suggests that jail hospital would be an ideal setting for such diversified exposure. Ihan's father adds that the timing is opportune, noting that the chairman of jail hospital has been contemplating stepping down. Despite the weightiness of the conversation, Ihan remains silent. Noticing Ihan's lack of response, his father queries if he's even paying attention to their discussion. Ihan, engrossed in petting his dog, looks up and assures them that he is indeed listening attentively, encouraging them to proceed with their conversation. At Seal Moon Jail Hospital, the atmosphere is tense as a recent surgery concludes successfully, and the patient's heart rate stabilizes. In the aftermath, two doctors engage in hushed conversation, their focus on a colleague named Hajin. They discuss her exceptional charisma and the fact that, as a first-year doctor, she manages a demanding schedule without a single complaint, primarily devoting her time to surgeries. In the midst of their discussion, Hajin bursts into the office of Park Im Young, the head of the cardiovascular center. Mr. Park greets her with a smile, but Hajin anxiously questions whether he is truly leaving. With a reassuring demeanor, Mr. Park advises her to continue her commendable work. Despite Hajin's worried expression, Mr. Park assures her that she shouldn't be overly concerned, after all, the patient for whom she inserted a stent is feeling much better. Hajin expresses concern for Mr. Park's well-being and urges him to take care and rest. Mr. Park playfully addresses her as Dr. Yoon, eliciting a mild smile from Hajin. In the midst of the exchange, Mr. Park recalls a promise he made to promote Hajin to an attending position by the next year. However, he becomes apprehensive, wondering if the cardiovascular center will still exist by then, given that the hospital has already been sold to a private company. Undeterred, Hajin exudes confidence, assuring Mr. Park that she will steadfastly manage the department in his absence. Despite her optimism, Mr. Park's worry persists, recognizing the uncertainties that come with the hospital's transition to private ownership. Mr. Park reflects aloud, suggesting that he should have left Hajin at Hankook University Hospital. Nervously, Hajin responds, expressing her contentment at Seal Moon Jail Hospital and assuring him that there's no need to worry about her. In his eyes, a glimmer of grim hope surfaces as Mr. Park declares their determination to endure the challenges, establish the Heart Transplant Center, and eventually bring over the rest of the Hankook University Hospital team. This aligns with Hajin's long-standing goal, filling her with joy at the prospect. With an air of anticipation, Mr. Park informs Hajin that the new chairman of the hospital is set to arrive soon. Curious, Hajin inquires about the identity of the incoming chairman. Mr. Park explains that he is the oldest son of the Seal Moon Group, someone who has been making appearances on television lately. Hajin, seemingly nonchalant, dismisses the significance, assuming it's just a small addition to the new chairman's biography on the hospital's website. Contrary to Hajin's casual attitude, Mr. Park dispels her assumptions, revealing details he heard from television rumors. Unfazed, Hajin advises him not to worry about such matters at the moment, emphasizing the importance of focusing on his health. 
she encourages him to recover swiftly so they can be together at the ribbon-cutting ceremony for the Heart Transplant Center, moment of shared aspiration and dedication to their common goal. In Ihan's house, he scrutinizes his mother's motives, questioning if her efforts are merely an attempt to salvage his tarnished reputation following the merger's fallout. His mother, taken aback, challenges Ihan, asking if he finds the situation amusing or simple. Ihan defends himself, highlighting that he didn't ruin the company, in fact, he doubled its sales. Despite his contributions, he is now being ousted due to the damage to his public image. His mother, unsure how to respond, casually attributes it to society's preference for coexistence, nervously laughing as she questions Ihan's stance on the matter. Ihan, giving a cold gaze, acknowledges his mother's perspective and reluctantly agrees to play along with the orchestrated plan. His mother, visibly relieved by his compliance, is secretly concerned as Ihan's cooperation is a departure from his usual demeanor. However, her relief is short-lived, as Ihan bluntly addresses a potential strategy to restore his image, an arranged marriage to a woman from a respectable family. He dismisses the idea, asserting that if such a plan were the solution, then he and his mother, two of the busiest people in Korea, wouldn't need to waste their time on such discussions. Expressing his desire to discuss his future after demonstrating his capability to boost the hospital's sales within a year, Ihan advises that if he achieves indisputable results, they should abandon any hopes of forcing him into marriage. With that declaration, he walks away, leaving his mother to grapple with the uncertainty of Ihan's unconventional approach to his future and the hospital's fate. In a hospital meeting, Heijin addresses the gathered staff, acknowledging that the head of their center will be absent for three months. Dr. Choi, visibly irritated, interrupts with a loud knock on the table, exclaiming that everyone is already aware of this fact. Undeterred, Heijin proceeds, emphasizing Dr. Park's strong desire to establish a heart transplant center and the collective aspiration within the cardiovascular surgery, CS, department. Despite their initial setback in securing funds for the next year due to Dr. Park's illness, Heijin optimistically informs them that supplementary budget planning is imminent, requiring them to have a solid plan in place. Dr. Choi, once again interjecting, dismisses the relevance of their efforts, citing the impending arrival of a new chairman. Heijin counters, deeming it the perfect time to raise the matter. However, Dr. Choi, skeptical and dismissive, insists that without written confirmation, only Dr. Park himself has the authority to bring it up. As Dr. Choi leaves, the rest of the attendees follow suit, leaving Heijin contemplating the difficulty of the task ahead. Dr. Choi turns back to deliver a condescending remark, asserting that despite sharing the title of doctor, they are not all on the same level. He implies that Heijin's future is secure with Dr. Park leading the center, advising her against getting greedy with the heart transplant center. With those words, Dr. Choi exits the meeting, leaving Heijin to ponder the challenges ahead. Undeterred, Heijin lifts her head, acknowledging that the road ahead won't be easy. Two other doctors enter, expressing their willingness to help. Heijin, with determination, reassures them that they just need to hold on for three months until Dr. Park's return. Despite the opposition and challenges, Heijin resolves to press forward, even if it means dragging the reluctant members of the team along. Heijin's colleague raises a concern, asking if there's a possibility they might not secure the heart transplant center. Heijin, with unwavering confidence, asserts that they will indeed obtain it, emphasizing that the hospital has a responsibility to grant it to them. The colleague, sounding a note of caution, warns Heijin about the new chairman, describing him as a challenging individual. Heijin, somewhat dismissively, remarks that he's just from a Chable family. However, the colleague clarifies that this chairman is different from other heirs of Chable families. Heijin, seemingly undisturbed, counters that he's still just a human like the rest of them. Her reassurance lifts the spirits of both colleagues, earning Heijin their admiration. Despite the positive reception, Heijin internalizes the weight of everyone's expectations, pondering how she will manage them. The colleague expresses her desire to learn from Heijin, and Heijin empathizes with her, understanding the desperation to lean on someone. She reflects on the support she received from Dr. Park. Before his departure, Dr. Park had warned Heijin about the internal conflicts and power struggles within the hospital, emphasizing that any sign of weakness, especially for young female surgeons like her, could be exploited. Heijin, acknowledging the challenges ahead, resolves not to give up, understanding the importance of standing strong in the face of adversity. Heijin inquires about the new chairman, prompting her colleague to downplay the concerns, assuring her that the rumors are likely exaggerated. The colleague hesitates, using the term animal to describe the chairman, but quickly clarifies that it's just a figure of speech. According to her friend, the chairman is undoubtedly human, but there's an unspoken intensity about him. Heijin, puzzled, seeks clarification, but the other colleague advises against discussing it further, emphasizing the vagueness of the statement. Heijin agrees, asserting that they'll soon find out the truth about the new chairman. 
Amidst their conversation, an emergency announcement blares through the hospital, summoning Hajin to the ER. Without a moment's hesitation, she starts sprinting towards the emergency, her focus solely on the potential critical condition of a patient. Unbeknownst to her, she crosses paths with Ihan, who attempts to check if he's okay. Ihan reassures him, mentioning that she didn't collide with him, just passed by. As Heijin continues her hurried pace, Ihan notices a leaf caught on his sleeve, casually picking it up. The man in the coat nervously chuckles, attempting to explain Heijin's behavior as a consequence of the hospital's frequent hectic nature. Justifying her actions, he observes two more colleagues following Heijin with urgency. Ihan, with a nonchalant attitude, comments on the natural busyness of a hospital, hinting at the correlation between a bustling hospital and financial success. In his mind, he acknowledges the financial dynamics at play, finding amusement in the connection between the hospital's activity level and its profitability. In the emergency ward, Heijin, inquiring about the situation, is briefed by a doctor with glasses. He explains that there was an accident at a construction site, widely covered in the news, resulting in two deaths upon arrival. Neurosurgeons and general surgeons have been informed, but Heijin arrived first. Immediately, she asks about the patient's consciousness status, to which the doctor replies that he is unconscious, with blood pressure at 150 over 115 and a heart rate of 117. The patient is unstable, displaying signs of multiple rib fractures, pneumothorax, and hemothorax. Expressing concern, Hagen notes that at least the patient's head seems fine. If they can stabilize his lungs, the rest of the procedure should be manageable. She instructs the doctor to call an anesthesiologist while she gathers her team. However, the doctor in glasses interjects, raising concerns about performing surgery without the patient's next of kin or a signed consent form. Unfazed, Hagen grins and suggests that if two or more medical professionals agree, they can proceed immediately, and the two professionals in question are him and her. With a cute grin directed at him, Hagen playfully involves the doctor in glasses, who becomes tense, questioning why she's dragging him into this situation. In the office, a child approaches Ihan, expressing concern about his grandpa's absence despite being physically present. Ihan, showing understanding, tousles the child's hair, sharing in his worries. The child then asks if he can play with the papers on the table, to which Ihan grants permission, recognizing that the child would likely play regardless of the response. As the child starts playing with the papers, Ihan's mind drifts back to his grandfather's earlier suggestion. He contemplates the idea that if he handles his responsibilities properly, there might be additional rewards in store for him. In the hospital, Heijin suggests to Juno, a man in glasses, that they should proceed with the operation to save the man in critical condition. Juno, flabbergasted, reminds Heijin of a past incident when Dr. Park had to intervene to resolve a similar situation. He emphasizes that the hospital is not a charity organization, and they need consultations from both general surgery, GS, and cardiovascular surgery, CS, departments. Undeterred, Heijin, displaying determination, urges Juno to perform the operation before anyone can object. She believes that if they can make significant progress, objections will be overridden. Juno attempts to dismiss the idea, pointing out the potentially high cost, tens of millions of won. Heijin, persistent, suggests tapping into occupational health and safety insurance. Juno, with a worried expression, tries to dissuade her by mentioning the challenges they face, particularly with foreigners in such cases. Heijin interrupts, acknowledging that many are undocumented immigrants. However, she reveals that there's a new foundation funded by a large company that assists foreign laborers with their medical fees. Dr. Jang, an advisor for this foundation, is someone she knows and trusts. Dr. Jang, associated with Hankook University Hospital, had promised to assist her when needed. Heijin believes that an accident like this will undoubtedly receive funding through the foundation. In a race against time, Heijin dismisses Juno's suggestion of waiting for confirmations from anesthesiology in general surgery, declaring that the patient has no time to spare. She promptly calls her team and proceeds with the operation. After successfully completing the surgery, Heijin contacts Dr. Jang to update him on the patient's condition and inquire about the next steps. Following the call, she amusingly informs Juno that the operation is done and Dr. Jang will handle the rest, with someone from the foundation obtaining the patient's signature once he wakes up. Teasingly, Juno expresses his worry about Heijin involving herself in too many matters. Heijin, with confidence, attributes her inclination to success in surgeries. Juno, seemingly exasperated, suggests that she should have stayed at Hankook University Hospital, where she could have become the second Dr. Kong Juhian. He mentions that her previous colleagues pleaded with her not to leave and still want her to return. Curious, Juno asks why she came to jail hospital, offering her a candy as he poses the question. While happily enjoying the candy, Heijin questions what's so bad about jail. 
Juno grins, highlighting the irony of Yoon Haejin, renowned for her surgical prowess, seemingly hiding out in the hospital. In their conversation about the heart transplant center, Juno questions Haejin if she has discussed it with others. Annoyed, Haejin confirms that she has and suggests that if he's looking for a garden, he should visit their wing, describing it as listless and overgrown, resembling a jungle. She expresses sadness that Dr. Park's dream of the heart transplant center is not gaining much traction, despite his contributions. Juno points out the irony of her advocating for the heart transplant center while running around with leaves stuck to her. He advises her to take it easy, emphasizing that no one knows what will happen. When Juno questions why she needs the center, given that Hankook University and Daehan University already have heart transplant centers, someone knocks on the door. Dr. Kyung Min enters, and Haejin inquires about the patient's condition. After requesting Kyung Min to wait outside, Haejin promises to join shortly. Teasingly, Juno remarks on Haejin's despicable expression, but she takes it as a compliment, labeling herself as the perfect one. Juno, curious about what he'll get for his troubles, receives a surprising response. Haejin pledges not to reveal that he asked her out eleven years ago at the orientation and cried next to a streetlight after her rejection. She playfully winks at him, leaving Juno in a state of mild dismay as she exits the room. While strolling through the lobby, a colleague urgently approached Haejin, conveying that the attendings were frantically searching for her due to the imminent arrival of the new chairman. The atmosphere buzzed with anticipation as the chairman was making rounds throughout the hospital before his inaugural ceremony. Engrossed in their conversation, Haejin's attention was abruptly seized by someone, prompting her to bow respectfully. It was none other than Ihan, the new chairman himself. With a warm smile, Haejin greeted Ihan. Dr. Choi promptly stepped in, energetically sharing insights about the hospital and its dedicated staff. He took a moment to introduce Haejin, emphasizing her role as the new surgeon in the cardiotheracic department. Ihan extended his hand for a greeting, and as Haejin reciprocated the gesture, an internal thought crossed her mind, he undeniably resembled a wolf. Ihan, curious, questioned if she already knew him, having recognized him immediately. Haejin recounted seeing him with Director Han and concluded that he must be the new chairman. She added that he was quite renowned, and the news of his arrival had sparked conversations among the entire hospital staff. Playfully, Ihan teased about the nature of those conversations, insinuating that they might not have been entirely positive. Haejin, momentarily taken aback, found relief when Ihan laughed it off, clarifying that it was all in good humor. She gathered herself, attempting to exude confidence, and Ihan complimented her on her passionate dedication to her job. As nerves and anxiety started to creep in, Haejin mustered the courage to broach the topic of the new heart transplant center. However, just as she began, a colleague hastily approached, interrupting the conversation with news that their foreign patient had awakened. Though Haejin joyfully conveyed she would catch up with Ihan shortly, her joy turned to surprise when the colleague revealed the patient had unexpectedly run away. Upon entering the patient's room, Haejin wastes no time and immediately inquires about the situation. The person attending to the patient explains that he had requested water, and as soon as they turned to retrieve it, he managed to escape. Haejin, trying to grasp the situation, asks if they checked the CCTV footage. The colleague responds, stating that they've already reviewed the footage and searched the entire hospital, but he seems to have vanished. Overwhelmed by shock and disbelief, Haejin can't help but sit on the bed, processing the unexpected turn of events. Colleagues attempt to offer words of reassurance, assuring her that everything will be okay. Just as they try to console her, another colleague bursts into the room with new information, they've identified the patient's escape route on the CCTV, and the police are now involved, tracing the cab he took. Contemplating the situation, Haejin wonders if the patient would have fled had he known that his hospital expenses were covered. The colleague apologizes for not informing the patient as soon as he woke up. Haejin, looking at the hospital bill, becomes visibly tense. Expressing her concern, she admits that if she were the patient, faced with such a bill, she might have run away and never voluntarily returned to the hospital. The scene captures the tension and frustration surrounding the unexpected escape, as well as Haejin's empathy for the patient's predicament.